Welcome back to Sunday Sports Replay. The fastest pitcher of all time may not be Nolan Ryan or Roger Clemens. Most baseball experts say it's Steve Dalkowski, a man living in a convalescent home in New Britain. How he got there, how hard he threw, and how wild he was is the stuff of baseball legend. The original wild thing, they called him. Steve Dalkowski, probably the hardest thrower ever. He pitched a no-hitter and lost. And that's how wild he was. Steve was like a jet. And you'd hear it after it went by you. Just before it hit the middle, it just sort of goes zzzz. With Dalkowski, you heard a sound before, and it's been described as a sound like, like a shirt ripping. It moved the air. It would crack. <laughs> like that. And it, then you could hear on the... Those kids on the other side going, oh my God. Steve Dalkowski first started making noise in the mid-1950s at New Britain High School. Nicknamed White Lightning, Dalkowski struck out a state record 24 batters in a nine-inning game, and his wildness struck fear into all. You know, we thought, it throws pretty fast, and I walked around to see what the pitch looked like uh, behind the backstop, and he threw it through the backstop. And I said, maybe it would be in my uh, best interest to, to go into the bleachers. Dalkowski threw so hard, he fractured his catcher's hand. Over time, it caused degenerative bone damage. And eventually, doctors removed part of Len Perry's wrist. And nobody wanted, nobody wanted to get up against him. But NBC 30's Tom Monahan had no choice. Monahan's Bristol teams faced Dalkowski three times and got only one hit. I don't think we ever saw the ball. I mean, he just threw that hard. In fact, the coach told me that he would have his batters take a three and two pitch, hoping it would be a ball. So kids didn't even swing? Very rarely. Very rarely. They were happy to get in and out of there. <laughs> <laughs> and when a hitter couldn't get out of the way of a Dalkowski pitch, it left a lasting impression. The imprint of that ball was in there for two months that we were sold together. So he threw pretty hard. Dalkowski threw even harder as a pro. There were no radar guns back then, but some think he pitched around 110 miles an hour. Cal Ripken Sr., who caught Dalkowski in the minors, thought he was even faster. Then he said, there's absolutely no question Steve could throw 120 miles an hour. Totally unheard of today. How fast? 110, he said. One guy said 112. But how? Dalkowski wore thick glasses, stood only 5'11", and weighed just 170 pounds. One of his minor league managers, Hall of Famer Earl Weaver, had a theory. Weaver always used to say that he got such tremendous torque on the ball because of his very small wrists, but that's conjecture as much as anything else. Nobody knows. He just did it. Problem for the Orioles organization, controlling all that speed. They tried everything. They tried every gimmick in the world. They tried putting a batter on each side of the, uh, the batter's box. They tried having him pitch to a target, a wooden target, while the only thing that happened was he splintered it. Here's the pitch. If it sounds like a movie script, you're right. <laughs> Dalkowski's erratic pitching inspired Tim Robbins' character, Great. Nuke Lelouch yep. Bull Durham. I wouldn't dig in there if I was you. Next one might be at your head. I don't know where it's gonna go. Swear to God. Not even Hollywood could make up these stories. Dalkowski once hit a person standing on line buying a hot dog. He tore a player's ear off. But he tore it off so clean that it was easily, able, they were easily able to sew it back on. He won a bet by throwing a fastball through a split rail fence. He uh, knocked an umpire out, broke the mask, sent him 18 feet. And he even chucked a ball more than 440 feet. Feats that today, seem mythical. It happened, that's all I can tell you. Yet his rubber arm never seemed to tire. He threw 283 pitches in one game. That is unheard of. And that's like our guys throwing three consecutive starts, about 100 pitches each game. That same night, he struck out 27 and walked 16. Dalkowski was so fast and so wild that even Red Sox Hall of Famer Ted Williams wanted no part of him. But Ted said, uh-uh. He got in there and maybe got in there and took one or two pitches and spun out of there because he said, I can't, you know, this guy is just bringing it so hard. I mean, he didn't want to bat, no, I didn't. No, he said, I had enough. Uh, I hope he doesn't make it, he said. Williams would get his wish. It was spring training, 1963. After six years in the minors, Dalkowski had finally harnessed his talent and control. 
he made the Orioles roster. But on the day he was fitted with a Baltimore jersey, he hurt his elbow and never made it to the majors. Went to throw to first base, felt a pop. It was over. I guess that's why I made that so. Uh, I broke down in the dugout. Dalkowski made a comeback, but two years later, his career was over. I'm pleased with what I did in uh, the minors. Not off the field, but on the field, yeah. The end of the night was when he said the end of the night was. And that's a long time when you're out dancing and having a good time and so forth. No longer able to throw as hard as he once did on this field growing up, Dalkowski still lived hard. The pitcher who struggled with his control had lost control of his life. For the next 30 years, he made his living picking fruit in California, spending what little money he earned supporting his addiction to alcohol. Those years for Stevie, they were lost years. Eventually, Dalkowski became lost, literally. He lost contact with his family, even his second wife, and ended up homeless. For six months, he lived on the streets of LA. Finally, on Christmas Eve, 1992, a family rescued him. People that his sister Pat calls the angels that saved her brother's life. They didn't even know Steve. They just saw this poor soul sitting there on Christmas Eve and brought him home. Soon after, his second wife passed away. Almost dead himself from internal bleeding, his sister Pat brought him back to Connecticut. He was back in New Britain, but he wasn't back. His mind wasn't here, nothing was here. Dalkowski suffers from alcohol dementia, a condition brought on by years of excessive drinking. It's caused gaps in his memory. But with the treatment and therapy he's received over the last 11 years at the Walnut Hill Care Center in New Britain, he slowly improved his memory, his speech, and his health. I'm sure it would be much nicer to be in another environment, but I think Stevie, in his own way, knows that this is the best place for him. He's had a, a lifelong battle with alcoholism, and in a, in a real sense, he has finally won that battle. I just keep saying I'm very lucky because I have him back. Still, as Dalkowski recently threw out the first pitch at a New Britain Rockcats game, it's hard not to imagine what might have been if only his grip on life had been as strong as his grip on a baseball. He had such phenomenal potential that the fact that he never made it, that he came that close and never made it because of his own demons and because of the injury and so forth, is the real tragedy, and it's really why he is part of the folklore and fiber of baseball. Yeah, I wish it was different. But still, life goes on, you know? It's a good ending, and then hopefully we've got many more years to go. More happy times. He's home, and uh, in New Britain, he will always be a legend. And he never thought he was better than anybody, ever. The fact, unfortunately, sometimes he should have thought he, how good he was and understood it. I don't care where I go in the country, in the United States, I'll say I stood in the batter's box against Steve Dalkowski. Who is the fastest pitcher of all time? Me. <laughs> By no doubt. And that says it all. He was the fastest pitcher who ever lived, period. In 995 minor league innings, Dalkowski struck out 1,396 batters and walked 1,354. We'll be right back. The Kia Optima is loaded. V6 engines, side airbags, four-wheel disc brakes, power everything. Plus, with all the cash back, it's the best mid-size city. I'll car. take it. Milk or cream? Cream and milk. The Kia Optima. With lots of features and lots of cash back, it's the easiest decision you'll ever make. Visit your Connecticut Kia retailers. Hurry, offer in soon. It's the Jeep Memorial Day sales event. Your chance to choose from the award-winning lineup of Jeep vehicles. Like the all-new Grand Cherokee. Four-wheel and off-road magazines, 4x4.